previously on how I care for over 100 houseplants. You saw me make my nutrient solution to water all my houseplants, which takes about three to five business days because I can't just water my plants and pick up a billion different projects along the way. None of which I got to because I fell asleep on the couch, woke up at 3 a.m. and by that time my brain went to a different dimension. Clearly never made it to my midnight plan chores. Woke up at 3 a.m. to get ready for bed and now I feel like death. I actually have so many meetings today. We'll see how much I can do. And I still have to deal with the Friday corms, figure out what to do with the syndapsis runners, replant my calatheas. Here's take two. This bop is in a self-watering pot. I think it's okay. Oh, the reservoir actually is dry. Let's see. I like to use a chopstick to see whether my plants are ready to be watered, especially for big potted plants like this. It's like baking. If it comes out clean, that means the soil's dry and it's ready to be watered. If it comes out wet with a lot of soil, that means it's not ready. You can feel it too. So I'm not gonna fill up this reservoir yet. It can wait. On to the next room. I can't even leave a room without finding something wrong. Look at my philodendron splendid. I got this as a itty bitty four leaf baby. And now it's taller than I am, which is not saying much because I'm only five feet tall. But it's still really impressive. Once I put it on a moss pole, the leaves just immediately sized up. Every leaf is getting bigger and bigger. Don't fall. The thing about moss poles is they need to be kept consistently moist. Look at the size of this pot. Look how small this pot is compared to the size of this plant. There's actually more roots in the moss pole than there are in the soil. When the aerial roots attach to the moss, the roots grow into it, and that's how it supports these huge, beautiful leaves. Like if I lift this up, because again, I love my clear pots, you can see the soil is still dark. It's still wet in here, so I don't need to water the soil, just the moss. Can you hear how crunchy it is? When you can hear the moss, it needs to be watered. I added two things into my moss poles. I put in yucca extract because this rehydrates moss. This one's a new bottle. I need to get another one. Okay. So like I was saying, the yucca extract rehydrates the moss, which is important for me because my moss poles are always dried out. And then I also add in probiotics. So this feeds the leaves and the roots with micronutrients. My plants get more vitamins than I do. And then I have this cool drippy drip thing. So it has this little spout and this is gonna slowly drip water into the moss pole. So I just lean this against a corner of a wall, let it balance, and there it goes. By the way, I love these vertical lights from moss poles. They're perfect because the light hits the front of all the leaves evenly. Smoochy smoochy mandatory. I love this Monstera Alba so much. This is my first rare plant that I ever got. It was just one leaf and it grew to this. It's not the fastest grower for me, but she's so pretty and she started getting her fenestrated leaves. So she's starting to mature. I love her. There's less water in this one because I'm only watering the moss pole for the Monstera. Whereas for the Majestic, I'm gonna let that water drip down all the way to the soil. Okay, everything is now fully saturated all the way through. Woohoo! Oh my god, I gotta get to my meeting. Yes, I'm one of those atrocious individuals who eat during Zoom meetings. I have 30 minutes before my next meeting, so I'm gonna water some more plants. Oh, I feel bad because some of these plants are legitimately unaliving themselves. Ah, these leaves are gone. I think pretty much everything in here needs to be watered. This is what happens when you go on a business trip. Everything is so wrinkly and droopy. Sorry, plants. Okay, this, this is done. I'm sorry. I 
did have a crazy gnat infestation in this cabinet last week, but it's all been completely resolved because this water has the anti-gnat drops. I also added in systemic granules. And because everything is pretty much quarantined and contained within this cabinet, nothing spread. All right, on to my next meeting. Maybe I do wiggle my fingers too much. Oh well. Okay. I just realized this is supposed to be like a houseplant tour and I haven't been naming anything in here. So I'll name it as I put everything back. Raffiadora tetrasperma, also known as mini monstera because they look like mini monstera leaves. Philodendron gloriosum. Alocasia black velvet. Syndapsis pictus has glittery leaves. If you hear baby noises, this is why. This was labeled as a glorious, but it's crawling, not climbing, so I wonder if it's a gloriosum. Can I open it? This was labeled as a philodendron El Choco Red, but it doesn't look like an El Choco to me, so... Mystery. Alocasia cupria. Variegated heartleaf philodendron. This is a corm from the black velvet that I grew. Philodendron sonoroi. Not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. And I broke up a stem and I wasn't sure if it was gonna grow anything, but it popped three leaves from a wet stick. That's the greenhouse. P.S. I love this begonia handle customized for this red stick cabinet. It's not baby proof. Plants. This is never going to end. I'm so tired, but stuff needs to get done, so we'll see how far I can get. I'll do the corms first. I love finding corms, this is my jam. Alocasias can be propagated by pulling off these bulb-like bulb-like thingies and popping them in water, moss. I use stratum and aquarium substrate. It can form a whole new plant. So I consider corms like backup plants because when a plant isn't doing too well, you can always just clone them essentially. That just hit me in the face. Okay, so I made a game time decision to completely take this out of LECA. It was outgrowing this water pot, so I think I'm just gonna plant this into soil. I just don't have clean LECA right now to put this into a bigger vessel. I'm going to repot this fried egg into a chunky soil mix. I have one, two, three, four, five corms! So I'm gonna peel these corms. This isn't necessary, but I find that it helps the roots pop out a little bit faster if I take off this outer casing. One time, I left some peeled corms out on the dining table and then my husband threw them away because he thought they were peanuts. First of all, why would you throw away peanuts? And second of all, I made him go back into the trash can he only found one of them, but I made sure that he never forgets what a corn looks. The bigger question is, what am I gonna do with seven fried eggs? I've already given away so many plants to all my friends. I'm pretty sure they don't want any more. Especially something like an alocasia, which requires higher humidity. If you have an alocasia, the next time you repot the plant, check for corms in the roots. This is the corm, and this is right side up. This is upside down. This is right side up. So the roots are gonna come out of these bumps on the side, and that's actually toward the top. I plant it so the bumps around this top part are up. I use sauce cups, and usually I'll use a soldering iron and poke holes in the top of this for airflow, but it's already like 10 o'clock. I don't feel like doing that right this moment. 
So I prefer this so much more to Fluval Stratum because Fluval just gets very crumbly and gross after a while. Whereas this, like even if I like squeeze it between my fingers really hard, it's super compacted so it doesn't break down, especially over time, which I like because Fluval really turns into just like mush after a while. I already know I'm going to regret having all five of these in one small little cup because all the roots are gonna get entangled. So I'm just gonna get four more sauce cups. My tower of corns. I have a heat mat taped to the bottom of my greenhouse downstairs and heat helps these root faster. So if these fit, that's where these will go. I nicknamed this root crack because it helps promote successful transplants. It's a mycorrhizae inoculant. I love this stuff. My friend told me about it. And anytime I repot, I just sprinkle it on and the roots just go crazy for it. Hence, root crack. It's also water soluble, so you can use it for semi hydroponics as well. Clear pot, root crack, chunky soil. Only thing that I'm gonna add in is fertilizer. It contains billions? A lot of healthy microbes and fungi, and it's all natural. It's safe around my kids. And I'm just gonna water it in, pray for the best, because I am moving it from LECA to soil, completely different substrates. Oh, I don't even know what time it is. It feels pretty late. Okay, I'm just gonna quickly repot some three plants into clear pots because that's super easy. Call it a night, and then I'll see where I can go from there. Cheaper again, I'm too tired. This will be for another day. I have so much to clean up. I've gone into the realm of crazy plant lady and I can't get out of it. See you next time.